Um, kind of staying in that theme last, ooh, was it two years ago? Some point in the pandemic, oh, that's like a, anyway. <laughs> um, I was commissioned by the BBC to respond to the word protest. I remember at that time um, I was feeling kind of a bit um, depleted. It was kind of at the height of the Black Lives Matter movement that I'm sure you all remember. And to be honest, um, I just didn't have the like the emotional capacity to kind of deal with it. I was also writing a dissertation. I was like, this is just this is not what I need. Um, um, so I considered this kind of like an an anti-protest poem in protest, if that makes sense. Um, and it goes, it's called Black Woman Protest. I cannot tell you about disorder, about relentless cries of mothers whose sons swallowed tear gas, voices burnt into heavy, waxy mumbles chambered by the echo of emptied barrels. I cannot tell you about rage. That sounds like clinking metal in 24 hour gyms, compressed jaws, thick veins bellowing like tree trunks in forest fires. I cannot tell you about marches that look like icons lined up on the altar of gods they asked predecessors of black not to believe in. Their pious paws sinking in the quicksand of autocracy. Smoke bombs incite the spirit like white sage wavering under exploded noses. I cannot tell you about placards, curled, and creased like dried petals of sorry for your loss bouquets in the hands of daughters who will search for their departed father in lovers. I cannot. There is so much existing to do before and in between the broadcasting of gasping, mangled remains, chocolate dipped strawberries left on the pavement like an offering to a God not shared. There is so much persisting to do, so much remaining, so much undoing, ongoing, building, between all of the surviving, man, there is so much living to do. Thank you.